Hi everybody. Um, tonight we're going to be going over 2.3, which is the sign law. So for most of you, this should be a review from last semester. So we won't uh, hopefully have to take too much time to go over it. So just recall the sign law as side A over sine A equals B over sine B, and that equals to C over sine C. Okay, and depending on whether we're solving for an angle or a side, we can flip the denominator and the numerator around. So we could have sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So let's take a look at our first example. So it says, what is the distance from Pudluck's cabin to the communication tower? And we're given this as a diagram. So we can see here's Pudluck's cabin. And we want to know what the distance is from here to the communication tower. So we're given an angle at B and A, as well as a side length A. So we're going to use um, a couple things here. So first what we're going to do is we can just determine what that third angle is. And we need that in order to get the angle that's across from the given side. Otherwise, we don't have enough information to use to solve the problem. So we determine that at being 31 degrees at C. Then we're going to use the sine law. So we're going to take B over sine C and that's going to equal C over sine C. So taking the values for B, we don't know what B is. That's this length down here. Sine of B is 88. Then we know that side C is 1.8 kilometers and we'll put that over sine of 31 which we found to be equal to angle C up here. So doing some rearranging, we're going to bring the sine 88 over to this side. So we multiply both sides by sine 88. And then we put that into our calculator and we find out that the approximate distance from Pudluck's cabin over to the communication tower is 3.492 kilometers or 3.5 kilometers. So that should be pretty straightforward, um, easy application of how to use the sine law. So in the next example, this time we're given a triangle, and this time we're actually supposed to draw it. So I've given a sketch here as to how that triangle would be drawn. So angle P is 30 degrees, side P across from that is 24.8, then we have Q given as 23.4 meters, and we want to determine the measure of R. Okay, so we're gonna look at what we have and we're going to substitute, um, start, sorry, substituting values into the sine law. So we have sine Q over side Q equals sine P over Q, uh, side P. Now, this was what I was talking about when I said we could rearrange the numerator and the denominator. This just saves us a couple steps when we're going through and solving the question. We don't have to uh, like cross multiply or anything like that. This just sets up the question nice and easy for us to work through. So substituting the values that we know in, we know side Q is 23.4 meters, sine of P is uh, sine 36, and side P is 24.8. Again, moving this 23.4 over to this other side, we multiply that by uh, both sides by that. And then because we're trying to find the angle here, what we have to do is take the inverse of this value. So this value here is equal to decimal 5546, and we're going to take the inverse of that to determine what the angle measure is. And we should find out that that angle measure is equal to 33.6 or roughly 34 degrees. But that's not the angle that we're trying to find. The angle that we're actually trying to find is angle R here. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to take 180 minus 34 minus 36. So we're minusing angle Q as well as the given angle P. Okay. So now we get into the ambiguous case, which is most people's arch nemesis when it comes to the uh, trig ratios and trigonometric functions. So, um, here we have all the situations listed. So 
two situations are when the given angle is either going to be less than 90, we have all of these situations over here. So if side A is greater than or equal to B, we have one possible solution. If A is equal to the height, we have one possible solution. If A is less than B, there's no possible solutions. It won't form a complete triangle in that situation. And then this is the one here where we're going to have two solutions or two possible situations. And that is when the side length A is less than side length B, but greater than the height. And up here is how we can determine what the, the height is. So H equals B sine A is how we would determine what the height is. Our other scenario is when we have an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. If we have side A less than or equal to B, we're actually going to have zero triangles. And if A is greater than B, we'll have one triangle. So let's take a look at our example. So in this example, we're given angle A equal to 30, side length A is 24, and B is 42. So we want to determine the measures of all the other sides and the angles, and we're going to do some rounding in our answer. So first thing that we need to do is sketch this triangle. So given the situation, this is what a sketch of our triangle would look like. And the height has been dashed here. So we need to determine what that height is so we can figure out if there's zero triangles, one triangle, or two triangles created. So we take H equal to B sine A, substitute B and sine A in, and we find out that H is equal to 21. From there, we're going to use our sine law. So we take sine B over B, and then sine A over A, substitute our values in. So side B is 42 centimeters, sine of A is sine 30, and then side A is 24. So rearranging for sine of B, we get 42 sine of 30 over 24. And then we have to take the inverse of this, okay? This here is equivalent to decimal 875. So we take the inverse of that to find out what the angle of B is. Okay, and we should find that that is equal to approximately 61 degrees. Okay, notice that this is an acute angle measure. We're going to have a second scenario in which an obtuse triangle can be created. Okay, when we determined that the height was 21, what we should have noticed was that A is 24 centimeters, so that's greater than H, but it's less than B. So that takes us back to our scenario right here. So H was 21, A was 24, and B was 42. Okay, so we need to not only calculate the triangle with an acute angle measure, we need to consider the obtuse angle measure. Okay, and this is what that second triangle would look like. So if we filled in this dotted line here, you notice that the angle created at B is in fact obtuse. So there's going to be two scenarios that we're going to be calculating for. So the first one is when uh, B is acute. So if B is acute, then angle C was going to equal 180 minus B minus the given angle A, which was 30. So C will equal 89. Now we need to figure out what side length C is because that's the last part of our triangle that's missing. So in order to do that, this is currently the information that we have. So we've got side B is 42 centimeters, A is 24, and then we've got our interior measures of the triangle here. So using our sine law, we have C over sine 89 equal to 24 over sine 30. Rearranging for sine C and calculating, we find out that C, sorry, this should be just rearranging for C, not sine C. So rearranging for C, we would get the, ang sorry, the side measure of 47.992. Okay, then we need to figure out what our angle measure for C 
and side length for C is in the case where angle B is obtuse. So we're pretty much going to follow this exact same thing working with an obtuse angle for B. So first thing we have to do is calculate our new angle C. So we take 180 minus the obtuse angle measure minus the angle measure for A. So C would equal 31 and this would be what our triangle looks like. So we can see this obtuse angle of 119. Angle A is 30, angle C is 31. Our given side lengths remain the same. So A is still 24 and B is 42. So following that same procedure, we're going to, you notice it's pretty parallel here. We're still solving for side C. This time, sine of C is equal to sine of 31. Okay, now we've got 24 over sine 30. Once again, this is my error. This should just say C equals. So we're solving for the side length C. So C would equal 24.71. Okay. So the summary of our two possible triangles, we would have an acute ang uh, sorry, triangle in which angle A is 30, angle B is 61, angle C is 89 with side lengths of A equal to 24, B equal 42, and C equals 48. Then we've got an obtuse triangle with A still 30 degrees, but B is going to be obtuse at 119 degrees, and C is going to be 31. Our side lengths of A and B stay the same at 24 and 42 respectively, and our new side length for C would be 25. Okay, so that is basically the ambiguous case. You've seen it before. The key thing to remember there is to make sure that you're determining what the height is so that you can determine whether there's zero, one, or two possible triangles that are created by the given situation. And that's all for tonight.